Hey guys, so um, it's 9-20-2023 and between 6.40 and 9.43 in the morning I received these words. Um, it's called Answers and Instructions and the subtitles are God Explains, Church Anointed, Holy, Who, Church Arise, and Hear. Hey guys, so it's 9-20-2023. Between 9.40 and 9.43 in the morning, I got these words. And as a reminder, none of these are my words. I'm just the scribe. And um, there is one video that should be referenced um, in the first section, especially if you have not seen Fight Club or if you want to review Flight Fight Club, there are some things that would be helpful in there. Um, the title is Answers and Instructions. The subtitles are God Explains, Church Anointed, Holy, Who, Church Arise, and Here. Number one, God Explains. I am the God who cares. I am the God who sees. I see all, even behind the veil. I see the unseen fights that you cannot see. See that I prepare in advance to call you to prayer for your own safety. I am for you. I want to see you succeed. It brings me joy to offer you my gifts. I am the God of hope. I offer a different ending. I offer a different way through life's challenges. I offer things to look forward to. Note that I tell you early how to succeed. My words are filled with answers to things unknown to the unrighteous. My words filled with clues of the end. My words filled with the hope of eternal salvation. My words filled with the story of my faithful provisions. My words filled with the provision and consequences of life. My word offers hope. Hope to have a successful life. Hope to have an easier way through life. And hope a way to me through my son. No other God no other man-made system, no false god, nothing man worships over me offers this. Why does man persist in foolishness when hope and wisdom are readily available? Pride and foolishness. Pride believes they know better. Foolishness lacks the discernment and wisdom to see there is a better way. Pride has many forms. Worshipping a false god, worshipping a wrong system, believing you know better than I, this is all pride. Wanting to live how you see fit because you do not want any other to lead, this is also pride. Pride is like a disease. Once the evil one lures a person into pride, pride grows larger and spreads. It is like how cancer metastasizes and spreads to more cells in the body. Pride can be very subtle, or it can be stubborn and intolerant, or it can be passive and deceptive. Regardless of expression, pride is rebellion to the one who made you. It is sin. I hear from man that they have no sins. The very statement that man feels he is sin-free is a statement of pride, which is the very definition of sin. All men have sin. One must evaluate and drop their pride before me and repent. To repent is to realize you have been living incorrectly and to stop and go the right way. The opposite of pride is humility. To repent of pride, you must come to me in humility. You should pray and speak to me with the understanding that you are a sinner and you have no way to get to me or to get to heaven without me. Express you understand that I sent my son to replace your sins with grace, but you must accept him as the one and only Messiah for the world and deny all others. You must request to have him and me lead your life through my word and through the Holy Spirit. You agree to follow what we direct for life, not because I am belligerent or an intolerant authoritarian, no but because I love and by following my leadership, you know that I will only guide you in the way that is best for you in the big picture. In this, you understand that I created humanity 
and that I understand how you are designed and how you will best survive life. This includes accepting things you do not understand or are unable to prove with man's methods. If you could prove all of my secrets with man's methods, how would I be worthy to be above man? The wisest man cannot fathom the tip of my knowledge or even the shallow end of understanding of my wisdom. I am greater than man. The created cannot fully understand the creator. To assume so is deep pride. Drop your pride and come to me. Some men have pride, but it is not the dominant trouble keeping them from me. Some of them are simply fools. To live foolishly bumbling along as others around them do, they are not in blatant prideful rebellions, but they are more concerned with fitting in with man than with me. Their hurdle is social rejection or valuing man's opinions, rules, philosophy, values, and falsehoods over me, their creator. These have a deep need to be surrounded by others who lead their life through peer pressure. This has been so through time. What those of you that bumble along through your life being told what to wear, how to act, what to believe, who to idolize, you do not understand that this is very deep deception the evil one, Satan, uses to manipulate people into his belief system. He uses fear of rejection. He uses influential people to mock those who are different. He uses your media of television, phones, games, books, social media to subtly introduce his plans and enforce them with those filled with his demons, to react in mean ways to be sure all comply. They comply to avoid the emotional pain of rejection. In your times, the governments have bowed to him and these tactics. The people fear saying the truth, for the truth is now persecuted, removed, mocked, criticized, canceled, fired, etc., the manipulation has not always been so easy for the evil one. Technology has made it very easy. Please notice the difference. His team of manipulators are mean and hurtful. They react in bold ways. They demand attention. In contrast, I offer love, acceptance, methods to succeed with peace, and a calm provided for nature. Can you see? The evil one manipulates those under his foot. I offer you the freedom to come under my wing as a child of the king, to be part of the large happy family forever, a life in eternity with no pain. The end for all in pride or foolishness is eternal torture. The evil one wishes to draw as many as possible with him to the lake of fire, which is eternal torture. But I invite all who come to me an eternity of only good. No pain, no horrors, no thing to perish. Only good, love, joy, and peace. Only happiness, acceptance, helpfulness, and kindness forever. Did you know that I designed each person to be unique and different? Look at the produce department at each large grocery store. So much variety between each item. This is how I designed people each beautiful in their own way, each with their own strengths and personal mix of traits that makes them unique. I favor the unique. But the evil one wishes to go opposite of everything I do, for he desires to undermine humanity, so his desire is to manipulate everyone into being the same. Why? This is the only way to control people. Notice I offer freedom. He offers constrictive control. Why does he want to control? Because he knows of the beauty of humanity. How amazing the people are when they all live out their uniqueness. And anything good and beautiful repels him. You see the pain people are in who are manipulated by peer pressure? None satisfied? None happy or content? The need for more, the need to fit in, anxiety and depression is off the charts. Why? 
because none of these are allowing themselves to be loosed, to live in freedom, to be their best version of themselves, which is found in being unique. It is, as you say, trying to put a square peg into a round hole. This brings dissatisfaction in life. In your generation, we're keeping up with the latest in trend in fashion, media, social rules, etc. It is such a pace, it keeps those easily manipulated in fear and with a need for fitting in to continually be forced into compliance. This causes them to watch others and certain ones they deem their leaders for clues of what is acceptable. This is not how humans were designed. You were designed to each bring your uniqueness together. For in the unique mix, when brought together to share, the whole becomes a beautiful thing. But forced to be a person you were not designed to be, this becomes a chore to live. This takes away joy and ushers in anxiety and depression. Be free from this. Choose me. Be yourself. Be boldly unique and be celebrated for it. There are other foolish. They care less about what the whole group thinks. These instead reject the norms of their society and they foolishly follow a small group of outsiders. They deem these small groups where they fit into society. These fools also have not taken two seconds to look around and drink in the world around them, the evidence where I am clearly the creator. These fools find folly to entertain their time. Some folly is a waste of time. Other folly is entertainment in the evil one's playground. It does not matter if your foolishness is manipulated by fitting in or by exclaiming you do not fit in to the whole and settling into a smaller group. All foolishness is living life without me, God. To not consult the one who created humans and to not ask what does the creator say about how we should best live just bumbling along in life is foolish. Stop being foolish. Think about it. Imagine a life of satisfaction and acceptance that celebrates you for you. One that does not demand you act or react in order to be accepted by others. If you choose me, you will be loved and accepted by the creator of the universe. Wrap your head around that thought. If the creator of the universe loves you and encourages you to be you within the confines of how you were designed, this brings amazing feelings of acceptance and builds joy and confidence. This takes away depression and anxiety. This turns you into a leader, not a follower with your peers. It is a game changer. Come to me. I love you. I will guide you. Be free of being manipulated by the evil one. There are some in the world who will not come to me. They know in their soul that they should. But things have happened. Some by other people, to them. To those they know, to people they have heard of. Or, things have happened that they deem unjust or unfair. They simply blame me for something they cannot understand. Some have lost loved ones, others abused by another. Some have had unhealthy churches or Christians affect them. Some deem general bad things that have occurred to be my fault. I understand the difficult things can be a snare for many. The issues to be considered are many, for many have this thinking about me. It is true that many people blame me or reject me for things that man has done. They also blame me for things they feel are unjust. They feel I should have prevented. Pain or fear are the source of these thoughts. A person wants to place the blame for an unexplainable horror somewhere. So they place it on me. Their pain turns to anger. Anger turns to hatred. I stay the object of their hatred. Hatred turns to a stubborn grudge where a cement wall is built, an emotional wall so solid that any words spoken of me 
are instantly rejected. With each opportunity to hear of me, another layer of cement goes up on the wall of their heart. These become certainly convinced that either there is no God or that God is not love or that God can't be trusted. This is pitiful and causes sorrow to my heart because none of these assumptions are true. But how did this thinking begin? Pain or fear? I am not the source of pain or fear. It is against my nature to cause pain or fear to a human. These come directly from the evil one. The person who has a hard heart based on their perception of me should rightly place their hard heart to the source of their pain onto the evil one. I am the one who offers to repair and restore what the evil one has stolen. The hateful toward me are quick to say that I should have prevented it or protected them from whatever issue started their hatred. I am keen to point out that I protect and provide for my own. At the time of your troubles, were you mine? Most, no. Some, yes. If you were not mine, what obligation would I have to you when you chose to live away from me? I protect and provide for my own, but not every being on earth. If you so choose to come to me, I will repair every pain and restore every wrong. I have done this thousands of times. There are many who could testify of this. However, if you were of me and another in their free will did something negative to you, you must ask yourself why. If I allowed a thing or a loss, why? Were you idolizing that which you lost over me? Were you being sifted? Was I testing if you would follow me in any circumstance or if you would walk away like an adulterer in a difficult time? Was I wanting you to turn to me fully? Did I need that person to come home to me for reasons you do not understand? Was I needing you to go through something so when you handed it to me, you could later minister to another and help them find me? Were you not prayed up? Not praying your borders of protection? Your boundaries of protection weakened by your lack of prayer? Not allowing your angels to work in my full power on your behalf? Were you involved in unclean and carnal activities that made you unfit to be called holy? Were you in rebellion and needed a dramatic wake-up call? Were you living this life as a Christian in name only, but living however you deemed fine, creating your own rules that contradicted mine? Were you not in the word, worship, and praying around the clock? The way to live is spelled out in the Bible. Those who received individual miracles, protections, and provisions were all the same. They were actively pursuing righteousness. They were actively pursuing me. They were actively pursuing in faith. They were fully focused on me. Yes, in the Bible, there were some situations where a fully focused, righteous, holy person had a difficult event. But those in full faith all turned over their difficulties to me and said, Lord, it's too heavy. I can't carry it. You have to help me. Save me from the pain. Help me through it. Fix it. Those without full faith all grew angry and fell away from me and grew in sinfulness. So those with difficulty now that have brewed their pain and fear into hatred toward me and they have closed their eyes and their ears to me, they never had full faith in me. They could not release their pain and trust that I really could repair the situation. They could not read Job and see the hope. They could only see the trial. It is in the trial that my voice becomes clear 
and a mere human has the opportunity to have the God of the universe speak directly to them. But they miss the opportunity because of their lack of faith. Their lack of faith brought them into slavery to the evil one who is the author of hatred. My ways are higher than your ways. Your role is not to question me. Your role is to trust me through the trial. These that do not trust me in a trial are like the tares of the field. They look similar to the wheat that grow side by side, but they are in fact a weed with black hearts that cannot be used to make unleavened bread. They are a poison. Why? Because the seed they grew from was not pure. They did not come in full faith. Can they still come in full faith? Yes. As the world quickly changes, those in pride, foolishness, and hatefulness toward me will have many different choices to make. Their minds will be quickly sorting through every truth they have come to believe. Those with full faith need to be kind and offer them me, truth, hope, love, the way. Not the me they have been manipulated into believing I am by the evil one. I love humanity. I made the very world for humanity, the ecosystems and atmosphere and universe in which you live. It was perfectly suited, but tainted by sin. It has taken the evil one all of this time to get humanity manipulated to the point of obedience to him. Never has the world been so evil, so dark, and so wicked. This will increase for a short time and then end. Step away from evil plans that the evil one has for this world. All of it is deception. What horrors are to come? You can be spared from these. How? Come to me with full faith. I am the God of love. I am the God of protections. I am the God of provisions. I am the God of miracles. I am the God of healing. I care. Come to me. Pray. Cry out. Learn of my son and his sacrifice. Read the Gospels in the New Testament of the Bible. See his love and sacrifice. Believe. This is a true story. There is historical evidence that men have uncovered. Trust me. Who am I? I am the Lord God Almighty, the first and the last. Read of my faithfulness in the Old Testament. This is also true. Come to me. I am truth. I will comfort any who place their life in my hands. I will provide and protect for all with full faith in me. Come. Number two, church. Bring your prayers. Pray for these who have trouble seeing me and laying themselves aside. Pray their hearts are opened and their eyes can see and their ears can hear. Pray the chains of the evil one are broken off of them for good. Number three, anointed. Listen for your name. The time is soon. What occurs in the earth that you know not of marches forward. Darkness is to invade in moments. Take communion. Pray for protection. As the darkness invades and overpowers those controlled by evil, pray for their salvation and your protection. Know the evil is erupting before your eyes in the men around you. This is your sign that your leaving is next. Stay in prayer as much as possible. Pray for the faithful to hear me. Pray for the church's mission. Pray for the church's protection. Pray for your safety until you come to me. Pray for those left here to serve and yet to convert to me. I have it all in my hand. Trust and obey. The soon time to come here will be quicker than you imagine. It seems a long wait for you, but when the shift occurs and the wicked, dark words that were spoken come to fruition in the people and violence abounds, rejoice, for your translation will be near. That all the changes to come will unfold almost simultaneously, never to return to normal. This is the sign you will see. Anoint yourself with my holy oil. Be covered by my holy power. 
The moment you hear of the evil that has erupted in the world, pray fervently for your boundaries of protection. Have faith. My timing is impeccable. All will see the church come to life. You are the start of the Holy Spirit's display. That my mighty power supersedes anything man can concoct, even through the powers of the evil one. He is of the created, and his power cannot supersede that of the creator. Anointed, bask in my presence. Prepare your heart to be with me. Prepare to bring my love to the world. Prepare to do mighty works. Prepare to be invincible to the enemy. Prepare to lead the church's revival. Prepare to bring defeat to the evil one. Prepare to see wonders. Prepare to bring in the harvest. Prepare to rescue the hurting. Prepare to flip the tables on the wicked. Prepare to rescue the half-borns and the rebels. Prepare for war the proper way. Prepare to bring victory to the church. Prepare to stand firm and be my witnesses. Prepare to be my willing vessels. Prepare. The best is moments away. Rejoice. Number four, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy is the Spirit. Holy, holy, holy are our shepherds. We owe all to you, Lord. You are worthy of all praise. You bring us wisdom. You bring us success. You bring us hope. You heal. You guide. You bless. Your powers protect. Your powers provide. Your powers lead. You speak and we move. You are silent and we pray. You guide and we are grateful. There is none like you. Thank you, Lord, for our lives and the opportunity to serve you. Your plans are pure and mighty. The enemy defeated already. We fight in prayer with trust and not doubt. When things seem overwhelming, we will turn them over to you. We will follow your commands. We will not cease day or night in prayer. We will not cease day or night in praising. We will not cease day or night in reading your words. We will help any you guide us to. We will not give up any of the holy ground upon which we stand. We will fight in prayer and stay steady for you. We love you, Lord. Please allow us to hear your voice clearly and then immediately trust and obey any directives. We trust your wisdom is above ours. We believe you. We trust your ways are higher than ours. And if they seem strange to us, we will have faith that what we do not understand, we only have to follow you. We will march in unison. Even though we are all over the world, we will walk forward together in faith, obeying your every directive until we reach every soul written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for using us in this way in history. It is an honor. We serve a mighty God who cannot fail. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy indeed, above all else. You alone are to be praised. You alone are the conqueror of all evil and darkness. Please bind all evil and darkness and bring an ocean of angels filled with your holy power to our holy defense. Protect your people that are full of faith just as you have promised. May we be like David, pure of heart, quick to repent, sincere in our love for you, kept safe constantly from the enemy, filled with praise, dancing with joy, grateful for your word. Please, Lord, help us all to be like David. Let us run at the enemy with aggressive prayers. Help us to stand when others cower. Help us to defend those lambs weaker from their predators. Help us to be so confident, not in our own strength, but because we trust you will go before us in victory. Help us to be like David. We love you, Lord. You are amazing and awesome. We ask all of this in your Son, Jesus Christ, the one and only Messiah, His holy name. Amen. Number five, who? Who is like the Lord God Almighty? No one. Who can defeat the Lord God Almighty? No one. Who helps His people? The Lord God Almighty. Who provides for His people? The Lord God Almighty. Who testifies that the Lord God Almighty is alive and real? 
the true church. Who trusts the Lord God Almighty for provisions, protections, and miracles? The true church. Who acts as a willing vessel for the Lord God Almighty? The true church. Who offers safety to the people of the world through Jesus, the one and only Messiah? The true church. Number six, church arise. We do nothing. He does it all through us. Stand. Allow him to show the world his wonders arise. Number seven, hear. Church, be ready to hear. I will speak in moments. I will call your name. Do not second guess. Others will not hear my words around you, but it will seem as if all can hear. When I call your name, just as Samuel say, yes, Lord, Then listen, do not speak. Listen in reverence. Calm your mind. Have a pen and paper ready. Write the time if you know it, then listen. As I speak, write the words I say. Follow any directives I give. After this, I will speak as needed. As you can see from the one before you, I speak at times many words, other times a few. I speak days in a row, or there will be days or weeks of silence in between. Do not doubt if you have initially heard your name, and then there are gaps of time. And you have not acted in disobedience by not obeying what I have told you. Just be patient. I will speak as needed. I do not speak for folly or for fellowship. Some, even near you, will hear more words or more often than you. This is not a competition. I give to each as they are to receive. Be grateful for what you have. Do not ever covet another. Know that those who receive much also have a greater burden to carry out all they they receive. I give as I see fit. You are to work together with what I give. I will draw people together as needed. Keep your words in a safe place with you. Add to them as you receive more. When I bring people together, each will have unique information that helps the whole. Do not make up any information. Even if you receive what seems to be incomplete, do not add to my words. Only write what I say. You will know it is from me because your mind will not rest until all of the words have been written down. I will swirl your mind with words and I will ring them in your ears. This is sacred communication from me. Do not store this information on your phones. Digital record keeping will be monitored. Do not make any videos of what I tell you. This will also be monitored. Do not speak them on the phone. Only write my words on paper. Do not type on a computer and then print, only write. In this season of sorrows, older methods of sharing information will be safe. Obey the words and no harm shall befall you. If I bring you people, do not share the words with all who come for safety. My words can only be shared with others of full faith. Much of what I give you will be for you personally. Some will be with others of full faith. But there are to be no secrets between those of full faith in these times. Allow the others to read all the words. Some of the things you receive that you feel are for you will be for another's benefit. Only share words given with those full of faith and only in person. Obey these rules and you will be spared harms and continue to hear for your obedience. If I tell you a thing is only for you, which will be for some a truth, have a separate book of paper for things only for you. This may be needed for those that lead many. They will need special details that only leaders need. We win this war in prayer. We win this war in stealth silence. We win this war in old ways. We win this war with my wisdom shared. We win this war with your obedience. We win this war with your willingness to be used as a vessel. Be confident in this. We do win this war. 
I have seen your success. My faithful, lovely church, our success begins in moments and will be final a short time after. Your part of this success is like the Israelites marching around Jericho in faith. The walls will fall. I have seen it to be so. Keep your focus on me and nothing can stop your success. And as far as the section that talked about David, I'm going to put a link or two below on how David did spiritual warfare. is kind of interesting, but it is in the spiritual warfare um, folder. And um, I hope you found this encouraging and I'll see you next time.